Welcome to this presentation on research-based student-selected components. Student-selected components, or SSCs, are a part of the medical curriculum in which students can choose an area to dedicate some time to, which is either uh, within the core curriculum or perhaps a bit further removed from the core curriculum. One possible option is to spend time gaining experience in academic research, and that's what I'll now discuss. Clinicians are ideally placed to identify areas for improvement in healthcare, and making these improvements typically requires an evidence base to support them. However, clinicians may not necessarily have had opportunity to gain the skills or experience in research to um, conduct studies to form this evidence base. And this is where research-based SSCs come in. Research-based SSCs provide a brief introduction to research, which could enable clinicians to continue to conduct research later in their careers and contribute to healthcare improvements in that way. To introduce myself, my name's Peter Charlton and I'm a researcher at the University of Cambridge. I work alongside clinical colleagues to develop data analysis techniques for wearables to enable them to be used for clinical decision making. And I frequently supervise medical students on student selected components. In this presentation, I'll cover three areas. Firstly, why do a research-based SSC? Secondly, what does it involve? And thirdly, is it for you? So firstly, why do a research-based SSC? Well, perhaps the most important reason is because you're interested. Interested in the topic of the research and want to find out more. You may well want to gain experience and skills in conducting research such as gaining skills in coding, enabling you to do uh, advanced data analyses. You may be considering a career in research and want just to find out what it would be like. Perhaps you'd like to develop critical appraisal skills, enabling you to critically appraise others' research and helping you to decide how the latest research could inform your own clinical practice. Perhaps you want to grow in confidence by being challenged to undertake a piece of research which requires you to learn new skills and work independently. You may want to enhance your CV to be able to say you've presented at a conference or published a journal article. And perhaps you want to be able to tick off key skills. Uh, key skills such as a piece of medical writing, describing a literature search, giving a presentation, and writing an abstract, all of which could potentially uh, be conducted in a research-based SSC. So what does it involve? Well, uh, in my experience, there are broadly two approaches to a research-based SSC. The first is to contribute to an ongoing piece of research. And to give you an example, Perhaps there is a systematic review, a large review being conducted already, and there's opportunity for students to contribute to that review, perhaps by screening articles for inclusion or by extracting data from some of those articles. And by working as part of a large team, it's possible to complete a really very helpful review. The second approach is quite different. Um, and this approach is running your own research project. And this is the approach that I tend to take when supervising SSCs. So I'll go into a bit more detail about this one. To illustrate the process, here are some example tasks which I would ask a student to undertake when running their research project. And the tasks go right from the preparation of the project through to planning, conducting the experiments, and then disseminating the findings. 
So I'm going through all the different stages of a research project. So the preparation, the tasks which take place before the SSC starts. Project planning, discussing with potential supervisors what you might do. Pre-reading, finding out a bit more about the subject, perhaps identifying particular areas of interest to you. And establishing learning objectives, having a think about what it is you want to get out of the project and discussing this with a potential supervisor. When it comes to the SSC actually starting, then there's more opportunity to plan the experiments in greater depth. And this could start with a literature review to establish the state of the art in the field and understand how you could contribute to moving the field forwards. Developing a research plan, perhaps an outline of the experiments you'll conduct how they will answer uh, your chosen research questions and making sure that you have access to data. Um, it's unlikely that within the time frame of an SSE that there will be sufficient time to set up prospective data collection and so often research-based SSEs make use of existing data. Having gone through the planning then the bulk of the time may well be spent on conducting experiments, uh, perhaps data analyses. And then later in the project, the student may well work on disseminating their findings. So writing up a project report, in my case, I treat this as an internal document, which is helpful for me and others to learn from what the student has done. Giving a project, project presentation, perhaps to the department. And then maybe, um, submitting the work to a conference and perhaps publishing it in a journal. So that gives a flavour of the potential tasks involved in a research-based SSC. So is it for you? Well here are just a few questions that you might consider to uh, assess whether a research-based SSE is for you. Firstly, are you interested in the research topic? Are you interested in doing research? And do you get along with the supervisor? Um, hopefully these are fairly straightforward questions, but ones that might not be so intuitive include, are you willing to work largely independently? And here this is important because academic research is often a largely independent task. You may only meet with your supervisor once a week. Are you happy to learn new skills? Often conducting research requires particular skills and it may be necessary to learn new skills to enable you to conduct the experiments. Are you prepared to be proactive and solve problems yourself? Um, so if you're only meeting your supervisor once a week, it's likely that you may encounter problems along the way that you need to solve proactively in order to continue progressing between meetings. And would the project meet your expectations? Um, do just uh, through discussions with a potential supervisor check that the project aligns with your expectations. So in this presentation we've briefly thought about why one might do a research-based SSE what it involves and could it be for you. And it's my hope that research-based SSEs will enable the clinicians of tomorrow to contribute to healthcare improvements and making use of the experience that they've gained in their SSE. So that hopefully by the time this little lad grows up, uh, wearables will be a fantastic tool for improving health and fitness across society. With that, I'd point you towards my website for further details if you're interested. Thanks for listening.